Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCM Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. We're seeing the precedent set for total governmental lawlessness right now. And that's an understatement. With the NSA, with the checkpoints, with the TSA, with the NATO being over our military for four years and Obama telling Congress go to hell, uh, with the illegals being legalized who have felonies by the tens of thousands, 36,000 in one swath two weeks ago, uh, Obama saying I'll release terrorists whenever I want and violate federal law. <clears throat> it is unprecedented, and even mainline Arubio and mainline Democratic law professors are on Infowars.com, DrudgeReport.com, today, and David Knight's coming up, he'll cover it all, saying, yeah, this is dictatorship. But see, it's more sophisticated. Obama will leave office. I predict he will leave office in two years. And I don't know, it's getting worse than I say sometimes. I mean, I underestimate. They can nuke cities. He says the number one th thing he's worried about is nukes going off. He doesn't know who's going to do it. You know, Army soldiers with Al-Qaeda, they've been floating in TV shows and movies and in mainstream TV uh, news. So I guess they're pre-programming. They could do it, but I, I don't think so. The point is, is they want the bureaucracy to be a dictatorship, the bureaucracy to be dictatorial. See, they don't need the puppet to stay in, folks. They're setting the pressure to use our Constitution like toilet paper. Let's go to John in Wisconsin. And then David Knight's going to come back, and I want to get his take. I'll be gone, but I want his take on this, this journey to train us to be under dictatorship and why they want to demonize the real press, and then he's going to take your calls. David Knight waiting in the wings, about to take the baton. John in Wisconsin, thanks for holding. Go ahead. Yeah, Alex, how's your holiday holding up? You know, I've just learned that all work and no play makes uh, Jack uh, not be good. So Jack will be taking more holidays than two weeks a year, like I usually do, to be with my children. But I will be working, and it seems like I get more done when I do take off uh, than when I just keep coming into the office six, seven days a week. So I, it, it's going very well, and uh, I just feel reborn every time I take a few days off. Well, you got a wonderful staff there. You should be able to relax a little bit once in a while, you know. But anyhow, that was the plan. That was the plan. In case they kill me, the plan is to actually have people in place. Go ahead. Uh, well, what I was going to call about is this prisoner exchange. You know, this was fabricated, and it was rolled out on purpose. And uh, it, it could be the... Uh, false flag that you've been talking about. You know, I don't think they're going to do a nuclear strike or anything like that because that kind of ruins the territory, you know. And they want territory, so it's got to be this. Not only that, the thing with the VA, it's been like that all the time ever since it was instituted by design. I agree with you and everybody I've talked to or family or doctors that have worked in them have told me the same thing, but it's undoubtedly from every vet I've talked to gotten the worst they've ever seen under Obama. Do you agree with that statement or disagree? Yeah, I do, but you have to understand where Obama came from. The uh, Both the uh, VA hospitals in Chicago are on the corrupt list, and they've always been that way, Hines and Woods. And uh, neither one of them had ever improved much, and there's always been rumors of death and overcrowding and not getting in and all kinds of stuff. So oh, yeah, no, no. They're a beta test of of death list. They're a beta test of uh, unplugging people. They're a beta test of the uh, death panels. I mean, this is our future. And it's all just how to manage it and get away with it. While they worship the vets to trick young people to join, while they act like they're so patriotic to get reflected glory in the government, they, they literally... Homeland Security admits veterans are their enemy. They're going to blow stuff up and blame it on the vets. They're coming for the vets. It's outrageous. And if we let a bunch of communists and foreign bankers get away with this, we deserve it. I don't think they're going to get away with it, John. What do you think? I don't think so either because now that it's so widely uh, in, in everybody's mind and everything, um, uh, 
something's got, got to be done. It's going to be done because... Absolutely. I, I, look, they've gone too far. It's pathological now. I can feel it in my gut. We're turning the corner. Pray, folks. We'll be back with uh, David Knight. Stay with us. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security by sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is doing designed to do. You watch, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the InfoWar to the next level. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Grew. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from 7 to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop. Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride, it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. I'll be finishing the program today. We're going to be taking your calls. Uh, we're going to go to Chad in South Carolina in just a minute. But before we do, I want to have a little bit different perspective on what's going on with Bergdahl. People are questioning what his motives were, which side he was on. They're talking about the release of the prisoners. But I want to focus on the fact that Obama clearly, clearly broke the law. How many times are we going to allow this to happen without taking action? Even Dianne Feinstein is talking about Obama breaking the law now. Now, I know that when we get rid of Obama, there's going to be somebody just, as, just like him or just as bad, perhaps even worse, to take his place. They've got plenty of clones of Obama waiting in the wings to take his place. But how long are we going to allow our highest government officials to thumb their noses at the law? Now, this is what Democrat Dianne Feinstein said today. She said, it comes to us with some surprise and dismay that the transfers went ahead with no consultation. Totally not following the law. That's from, uh, uh, from townhall.com. They report that totally not following the law. That's Dianne Feinstein. So if he's like totally not following the law, dude, can we impeach him, get rid of him? replace him with somebody else, I mean, even Joe Biden, it would at least be a warning. It would at least be a movement in the right direction. This comes two days after Jeffrey Tubin, a Harvard professor, someone who identifies with the Democratic Party, 
someone who's not necessarily as, as linked into it as Dianne Feinstein, but clearly that's his point of view. He was asked on CNN by Wolf Blitzer. He says, uh, you've looked at the law, you've looked at the signing statement, you've gone through it, said Blitzer. Did the president break the law? And he was kind of surprised when Tubin said, yes, I think he clearly broke the law. Here's the deal. The law says 30 days notice. He didn't give 30 days notice. It's that simple. There isn't any way that you can spin this. He didn't give 30 days notice. Now, Obama, is being reported, declined to give a 30-day notice. Or, as the White House says, he waived it because this guy Bergdahl was supposedly in immediate danger. Really? Really? Can you make the case for that? This is what Tubin said. He said, it's true he issued signing statements, but signing statements are not law. It's the president's opinion about what the law should mean. Now, it may be that the law is unconstitutional. It may be that the law is a violation of his power as commander-in-chief, but no court has held that. The law is on the books. He didn't follow the law. And then Blitzer says, uh, well, you realize, of course, you're accusing the president of the United States of breaking the law. He says, well, I don't think the president's too worried about what I think about this. You know what? The president isn't too worried about what anybody thinks about this, whether anybody thinks he's breaking the law. That's what makes this all so dangerous. That's why we continue to head down this path, just like the NDAA, where the president signs that he believes that he has authority to indefinitely detain anyone using the U.S. military, that he can transport anyone using the military. And, of course, that has been approved by, guess what, the Republicans as well. It's not just an Obama thing. It's not just a Democrat thing. They couldn't pass the NDAA and these statements that uh, were put in there about suspending due process. They couldn't have passed that without the Republicans in the House. So the Republicans in the House don't have a problem with that either. That's the big problem for us. Now, at the bottom of the hour, we're going to talk about the 25th anniversary of Tiananmen Square. But just as a teaser, I want to give you this. This is a statement that uh, Kit Daniels handed out to me. Uh, it, this is from a uh, PBS Frontline story about uh, eight years ago in 2006. They interviewed a Chinese journalist who was there at the massacre. One of the things she said that I thought was interesting was she said, we passed out copies of the famous picture. That would be the tank man, the guy standing in front of the column of tanks. We passed out pictures of uh, copies of that famous picture to undergraduates at Beijing University. That's where the activism started. And these undergraduate students today at Beijing University were genuinely mystified. One of them said, I don't know, uh, maybe it's a parade or something. Another one said very politely, may I ask, is this a piece of your artwork? How has the regime succeeded in wiping out recent history? Well, we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about some interviews with some of the people who were in the military at that time. I want to get a perspective of the people who were in the military. Think about the guy in the tank, not just about the guy in front of the tank. The guy in front of the tank was amazingly courageous. He had no reason to believe that these guys wouldn't just run him down. And it's a good thing that the guys in the tank that day didn't do it. But eventually, they did. Eventually, they fired on the crowd. What was it that changed? How did the Chinese government manipulate the troops in the days leading up to this? Because this is not a one-day event. This is something like Waco that began... Back in the middle of April, if I believe correctly, if I remember correctly, and, and it went to the beginning of June. So this is something that developed over a period of about six weeks or so. And during that period of time, how did the Chinese government control the Chinese military to get them from respecting human rights and human life enough that they would not run over a man who was standing in front of them as protest? How did they go from that to a situation where these guys would not only fire on unarmed civilians, but that they would bayonet them as well. And we also have a clip from a man who was there 25 years ago, and he was also in Boston a year ago. And when he was in Boston a year ago, April 19th, to celebrate Patriots Day there, he had something very interesting to say about the uh, difference between armed demonstrators and unarmed demonstrators. And we've seen that over and over again since I've been here at InfoWars, and I saw it at the Bundy Ranch standoff. So I want to talk about the difference in the way CNN covered the Tiananmen Square standoff. I want to talk about the way they covered the Bundy Ranch standoff, the difference in the way they covered this recent uh, 
case of anti-government uh, activity, the anti-government demonstrations in Turkey and the CNN correspondent that was arrested